In our relentless pursuit to uncover the truth surrounding the Titan's implosion, we have stumbled upon a trove of new evidence and rare footage that sheds light on the events leading up to the catastrophic incident. This time our investigation shifts to the 21-inch viewport, the captivating feature of the Titan sub, and the most criticized component that has sparked heated debates. Some believe it may have played a significant role in the sub's demise, while others argue that it is not the cause. To unravel its truth, let us embark on a journey into the depths of the gathered evidence and explore the intricacies surrounding this critical element. The 21-inch viewport was manufactured by Hydrospace Group and later fitted into the Titan sub in 2017, making it likely the same viewport reviewed by David Lockridge in 2018. This component was made of acrylic plexiglass with a diameter of 380 mm, offering exceptional optical clarity for occupants to experience the underwater world. Some experts assert that the viewport's material composition and design may not have met the rigorous standards required for deep-sea exploration. They posit that the immense pressures at great depths, combined with the stress placed on the window during dives, may have compromised its integrity, contributing to the submersible's catastrophic implosion. In our relentless pursuit of the truth, we stumble upon a treasure trove of hidden information. Within our possession lies a letter, dated 2018, addressed to Stockton Rush, CEO of Oceangate. Its contents reveal layer after layer of unsettling truths. As we carefully unfold the pages, the revelations from the manufacturer's letter shed new light on this critical element. The manufacturer's letter discloses a limited certification for the porthole, specifying a maximum depth rating of only 1,300 meters. This certification falls far below the depths the Titan intended to reach during its ambitious explorations. This revelation raises significant questions about Stockton Rush's decision to rely on a porthole that does not possess the necessary certification for the intended depths. It highlights a potential disregard for the manufacturer's expertise and the limitations they had clearly communicated. Moving on, it's worth noting that Ocean Gate has experimented with multiple viewport versions throughout its journey. However, what remains unclear is whether these iterations proved successful or not in providing the ideal option for the deep sea exploration. To gain deeper insights into this matter, we now turn our attention to Alfred Scott McLaren, a retired U.S. Navy submarine captain with extensive experience in deep sea diving. Drawing from his wealth of wisdom and expertise, in the use of the viewport in deep sea exploration. When you have different materials, different molecular structure, they have different coefficients of expansion and compression, and you then you make repeated cycles in depth, of course you're going to work that seal loose. And that's why submarines don't run around with, with any portholes at all, come to think of it. It's a weak point. McLaren states that the usage of the porthole might create a weak point in the design, particularly in the extreme pressure of the deep sea. Now that it has been proven that everyone's initial assumptions were against it, let's shift our focus to what our investigation has to say about it. By analyzing the evidence and examining the engineering aspects in detail aiming to find the real cause. To do so, we must carefully analyze the recovered debris and inspect the viewport's remnants for signs of structural flaws or external damage. After a deep examination, the results are shocking. Initially, everyone claimed and believed that the viewport was the problem or the cause of the implosion, especially considering its maximum depth of 1,300 meters, which, according to McLaren, could be considered a weak point. However, it turns out that this assumption is not the case. Upon examining the 3D model of the sub, we can observe that the viewport is equipped with a circular support above it, fastened securely to the front dome using 17 bolts. If the viewport were indeed the cause of the implosion, we would expect to see evidence of damage to the acrylic plexiglass without affecting the secure circle and its bolts.
However, in our investigation, no such evidence was found. Instead, the implosion appeared to have originated from inside the hull, causing a catastrophic collapse that affected not only the front dome's bolts, but also those securing the viewport. This revelation proves that the implosion was not caused by the viewport. In fact, it was a result of internal forces within the substructure, leading to a cascade of failure that eventually led to the tragic incident. Now, let's go back to Stockton Rush's footage where he talks about the viewport, aiming to gain a deeper understanding of the engineering behind it. It's acrylic, plexiglass. Wow. Yeah, and it is uh, seven inches thick. It weighs about 80 pounds. And when we go to the Titanic, it will squeeze in about three quarters of an inch. It just deforms. The acrylic's great because it squeezes in, and before it cracks or fails, it starts to, to crackle. And so you get a huge warning if it's going to fail. After watching the video, it becomes apparent that some of his engineering decisions have proven to be effective after all. We encourage you to take part in this investigation actively. We value your thoughts and ideas regarding this matter, so please feel free to share them with us. Additionally, help us spread the word by sharing this video with your friends, liking, and subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching and joining us on this journey.